Hey guys, we're back again. Um, we're going to talk about songwriting for the next hour and something, right? Oh, hold on. Be right back. All right. Hi. So um, let me give you a link. All righty. Let's see. We're going to go to this one. Is this it there? Yes. We're going we're gonna to copy that. All right. And then we're going to go back to this one. And we're going to go down here. L-I-N-K link to L. Y R I C S link to lyrics. And it's called Creative Vets S O L D I E R Soldier and War. All right. Here's this. Oh, thank you, honey. Oh, that's just wonderful. Thanks. Uh -huh. That's my darling bride. Ah. All right. And that, here's the link. No, oh, I didn't get it. Try it again. Copy that. And then paste it on there. There we go. And we push that. That's the link. You'll find a f uh, that opens to a folder. And in that folder, you'll find Creative Vets, uh, Soldier and War Songs. We're talking about different kinds of ways to express your um, your military experience, right? We've already been over American Soldier. We've been over Devils and Dust. Um, remember we talked about the different kinds of development? Um, so we're going through the different kinds of development that we can have. The um, Just to review, um, the American Soldier was a descriptive. So one of the ways you can talk about your experience is simply describing yourself or describing, you know, uh, an object that you might have that, that was important to you, like your convoy tank or, um, you know, your, your weapon of choice, whatever it might, be, might have been, or a favorite, you know, like your your, an old shirt, whatever, or just talk about yourself and all your accoutrement, you know? Yeah. So you can do that. And that's what we did with American Soldier, was descriptive, a physical description. The second one was Devils and Dust, where we took one episode, one incident. I call it a snapshot development technique, where we have a picture of a guy, you know, I think of in a foxhole, but I don't think there were foxholes you know, over in the Middle East. It was more, you know, behind a wall or, you know, uh, on a convoy of some kind. At any rate, uh, one, one picture, one incident, right? That's devils and dust. And we, and we broke down how many different ways we could, you know, we could, uh, from that picture, we could go backward, the history of that picture. We could go forward into the future, what it might be like after that picture was taken. But it all takes place from that perspective, right? Now, the next one we're going to do is called Letters from Home, right? Now, Letters from Home is an object, right? And uh, we're going to read this down. Oh, first we're going to play it. And then we're going to uh, check out and see what's going on with that and why that song 
was so successful, right? So we're going to deconstruct this Letters from Home. And then after that, we'll have uh, a song that I really, really love called Safe and Sound, right? Um, which is a Sheryl Crow, one of my favorite Sheryl Crow songs. Uh, and we'll talk about that one uh, next. All right? So let's listen to this song. Let me go to my... Uh, let's see, Letters from Home. Here it is. June. I hope this letter catches up with you and finds you well. It's been dry, but they're calling for rain. And everything's the same old same in Johnsonville. Your stubborn old daddy ain't said too much, but I'm sure you know he sends his love. that idea right um, this is a John uh, Michael Montgomery I believe uh, yep John Michael Montgomery he was one of my favorites uh, I really love the country songs of the 90s uh, they still sounded country but they had a little modern twist to them um, so what do we got here as far as a development technique? We got an object. So one way we can talk about our military experience is picking an object. And in this case, we want an, of course, we always want an emotional object. So what's this emotional object? It can't be nothing more emotional than a letter from home, right? 
So we've got a really good object. That's a f fantastic thing to, to have. Um, and we're saying uh, it opens like it opens like you're reading this letter. So that's you know fantastic way to start a letter song is to just say what what the content is, rather than saying, you know, I got a letter today in the mail and I went into a corner all by myself. Um, that is one way to 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 tackle this problem. But in this case, this is David uh, Corey Lee and Tony Mac Lane wrote this song. Uh, they decided just to open right with the content of the letter, right? So we open with the content. My dearest son, it's almost June. I hope this letter catches up with you and finds you well. Okay? Now, notice there's no rhyme scheme in there at all. My dearest son, it's almost June. I hope this letter, oh, catches up with you. Sorry, June and you. Yeah. So we got June and you, and it finds you well, right? And that last line is surprisingly short. Normally, I would think it would be, my dearest son, it's almost June. I hope this letter catches up with you. da 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 right? So, my dearest son, it's almost June. That's four which is typical of a line. I hope this letter catches up with you. Another four stresses we're talking about. And now usually, if it's a three line set, which is what these are, these are sets of threes, it's usually the, the last line, the third line is usually longer. So it's usually da 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 And that fifth stress signals that actually it's it's now a set of three. Uh, but instead, surprisingly, and it was really surprising, it's been dry. It's been dry. It almost sounds like just one stress, which really you go, whoa. Uh, so that is a technique of getting your attention. Again, we're talking about Tiny surprises. Uh, let's go over the tools that we have as a songwriter. The tools we have, well, first we have, of course, our wonderful imagination. I like to call it our spark, right? The spark, uh, that's when our creative process is really working, um, and it's sparking, it's going. Um, but the tools we have, once we get something on paper, once we get an idea and our spark is working, the tools we have are unique detail, contrast and repetition so and <laughs> a lot of it is setting up expectations and then delivering little either what they like or a little surprise right so in this case we're delivering what they want when we say my dear son it's almost june i hope this letter catches up with you boom that is a uh, that is a symmetrical couplet. Both of them have four stresses, and both of them have a, a masculine ending. In other words, the stress is on the last syllable. Almost June stress catches up with you, another stress, right? So that's a complete thing. But then he throws in, it's been dry. And you're going, whoa, that's such a surprise. So that little bit of surprise, that contrast, really gets your attention. So, yes, we have an interesting beginning. My dearest son, it's almost June. I hope this letter catches up with you. So you're wondering, oh, this is a letter. I wonder what it's. I wonder what's going on. So it's got your attention. It's not like ah, it's not that big, but it's still, it's got your attention. But then, it's been dry. That that sudden super short line really just really gets you really gets your attention so you're going whoa so let's read on so now you've really got them engaged um but they're but they're calling for rain and everything's the same old same but they're calling mm, but they're calling for rain i think there's an accent that's not spoken so it'd be mm, yeah they're calling for rain 
everything's the same old same in Jacksonville. It's like, boom, again, it's been dry in Jacksonville, or in, jo sorry, in Jonesville, in Johnsonville, ah, Johnsonville, okay. Um, so now we've, we've completed the rhyme. We've got, dr uh, it's been dry in Jacksonville. Well, it doesn't really rhyme, does it? That's very interesting. It's been dry, Johnsonville. Huh, it didn't rhyme. So we have A, A, X, B, B, X. Hmm, that is a very interesting um, little uh, notation there. Uh, that would have rhymed if, if, if they said, um, like, uh, uh, I'm trying to pick a town that has an I sound. Uh, in uh, second I, uh, ben, uh, second I, Ben and I, uh, Fan and I, I can't think of one uh, off the top of my head, but it's been dry. Uh, in these parts, I can't think of one. Anyway, so they didn't. I mean, I could go online right now and go. Uh, and go, you know, um, towns, because it doesn't matter what town it is, right? It can be any town. I can go to my rhyming dictionary, which I have right here. Um, I go to my rhyming dictionary. And the rhyming dictionary I recommend is called wikirhymer.com. And I highly recommend the um, the pro version, which is about ten or eleven bucks a year. So we're gonna go like uh, dry D R Y, and I'm gonna put in find, and uh, there's usually uh, Dubai. Oh no, we don't want there. Versailles, French fry, uh, uh, and Brunei. Um, mistry, try, quai. Isn't that interesting? There's nothing all... <laughs> what's interesting about this is that all the rhymes are like Far Eastern, which is kind of odd because this guy's in the Middle East and uh, and there is no... There doesn't seem to be any town, because one of the things they do in WikiRhymer Pro is they give you names that end with Y, right? Uh, there's July. Oh, you could say July. Uh, um, and it's going, and it's and it's mid and it's mid July. Let's go back to our lyric here and see what we got here. But he they decided not to do that, which is so interesting. Uh, Everything's the same old same uh, here in July. Uh, oh, Kato and Getaway, uh, an Indian names. Yeah, yeah they, you might be able to find an Indian name, like up in Michigan, Upper Michigan or something. Uh, anyway, I'm not going to dwell on it, uh, but uh, interesting that... Uh, there isn't a, there isn't an I sounding name. Uh, there's Walleye here in Walleye. <laughs> I guess there's a town called Walleye again up in Michigan. Wouldn't it be up in Michigan? That's hilarious. All right, uh, up here in North Walleye in, in Walleye. That is very funny. Anyway, I super recommend um, the um, the Wiki Rhymer. Very, very cool place. Uh, let's see. Where's my... Um, where did my thing go? Uh, let's see. Um, okay, let me go back to my... Uh, I closed accidentally. I opened up WikiRhymer on the same page as my, as my chat. So I have to start a new chat. So if you made a comment to me just recently, I won't see it. So you're going to have to 
go back let me go to my um, go to my internet go to my bookmarks go down to chat I have to be careful when I go to open when I go to open um, something that I don't accidentally open on the same page as my chat and that was my massive flaw is that that's what I did is I opened on the chat and uh, so now I'm back on chat so uh, once again uh, you know just just to say this thank you for for being here I really appreciate your participation in this uh, in this little songwriting a series that, that I'm doing. It's pretty casual. It's uh, it's light. I'm not doing formal lessons. Uh, we're trying to do something, keep it loose, trying to keep it interesting uh, by uh, using specific song examples uh, rather than giving actual lectures on the different aspects of songwriting. But here's the new idea that I have because I've been brainstorming this uh, series that I'm doing. And what I'd like to try um, for you that are out there, I would like to uh, take requests. So if you have a particular aspect of songwriting that you would like to know about, I might be able to answer that question for you. I've been teaching songwriting for 42 years at Belmont, and now I've been teaching for two years at Vanderbilt at Blair and I'm actually teaching a creative arts program at Blair uh, in the fall I, I hope that that happens again it all revolves around donations and donations might be a little tight right now because of the coronavirus COVID-19 so if you anyone that's listening has some extra money it'd be wonderful if you could donate to Creativets at creativets.org. And we would thank you so much and be so appreciative of that if you could do that. Um, any rate, so if, there's, if you're out there uh, and you made a comment to me, go ahead and if you could just type in that comment again because I, I accidentally started, I had to start a new chat. It doesn't for some reason, it won't reboot the old chat. And that is a flaw that I'm really not crazy about. But it's what we have to live with. So uh, please uh, make your comments again. And if you have a request, I'm taking a request. If you want to deconstruct a particular song that, you're, that you really love, but you think is really kind of interesting, and you want to know, you know, how did that song, um, why is that song such a hit? Uh, we can do that, all right? Um, and if you want to know something about a particular part of the songwriting process, we can do that too. Um, let me look on the um, creativeets here and see if I have in here, I don't have it yet, what I'm going to do for you, and in fact, because we're talking about that, Let's go ahead and put that there now. I'm going to go on in my finder and I'm going to go to Creative Vets. Um, and let's see if I've got, uh, I'm going to do my lecture, uh, my outline. Here's my outline. I'm going to drag this outline to. Um, I'm going to put it in there. I'm going to put it in here. Watch this. Boom. And it will appear. There it is. Okay. This is wonderful. All right. So now let me go back and open up everything. Uh, let me go back to my chat and let me go back to my picture and back to Spotify. Good. There we are. Now, what I just did is I put my outline of my course on that here I'll, I'll post it again because we want to know what it is uh, here's the drive so we're going to do that let's just uh, copy that make sure it's complete yep I'm going to copy it and I'm going to repaste it back on here here's the link 
l i n k link to creativist folder all right and uh, we're going to post that and then i'm going to pop that in there and here it goes we'll post that and that's the link all right so you can go to that link and get the lyrics we're working on today uh, and you can also get the outline which will be at the very top so you can uh, look at that outline and peruse the outline if you like uh, and then you can uh, look at some songs that you might like or if any questions that you have that uh, that I'm doing and that, that's on that outline you can um, hey Timmy uh, Timmy's come back all right thank you for hosting appreciate that um, if you have any questions from this outline feel free to ask me on the chat what about this what about that or what about a particular song that you that you want to be you want me to deconstruct for you we can do it and actually we can do it on the spot because we can go we can all go online and get the lyric pretty easy type it in boom it's there and I can go on Spotify and boom the songs there and so we can we can do that almost spontaneously all right there we go there's the donate and everything okay great um, now we were talking about letters from home all right so let's get back to that we we're talking about um, the lyric and the rhyme scheme and the line length which you know which is one of the main things that creates interest you know when we're writing songs for uh, commercial purposes we want to have a compelling emotion and we want to continue creating interest and have that arc go up 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 always that arc of interest go way up to the top we want to keep it going up we don't want it to flat flat line at a particular place so we're always looking for ways to keep that momentum going to keep the interest musically lyrically and when we talk about music we're talking about melody and chords and textures right so when I talk about textures it could be just this interesting let me bring this down a little bit so you can see my guitar my beautiful Gibson I love my gibbo it's a it's a J45 with a cutaway and there's my Gibson name on there yeah my faithful three-string capo which I love so much and we'll put that on there just because I love it you know and so um, so we could we could uh, so texture wise we could uh, do the, ver the the verses in the Now, chorus. See, I changed the texture from a finger picking to a. So, just that simple amount of change, contrast creates interest. Original details create interest, contrast creates interest, and repetition creates interest. To a certain degree, we have to mix them up. And any particular, at any particular creative moment, we never know when we sit down to write a song, we don't know which is going to come first, last, whatever. We're going to balance all these things out as we're writing in that moment. So we may have a moment where we feel like, just intuitively, we feel like we're going to do a lot of repetition today 
and I'm, when I'm writing, and uh, and uh, so that's what happens on that day. You may have another day where you say, you know, I'd like to, I just feel like a lot of contrast is going to do me good today. So you do more contrast than repetition. And when it comes to original detail, we sprinkle it in with what I would call sophomoric or generic detail, which is what we're, you know, predictable details. We mix in a little original detail. And that goes, ooh, oh, that's interesting. Ah, that's interesting. Yeah. So, um, so as we read these lyrics down, we're looking for those three things. And we're looking for, again, setting up expectations. From the very minute that I start playing, I set up an expectation. So I'm going... Now, there, your expectation is, I'm going to do that again. Because usually when we create a motif, we usually want to do it twice. That's what the listener is expecting. So... I could do that again. That's exactly the same as the first one. So I've repeated because that's just the way I felt. But I wouldn't have to do that. I could change it anywhere. Let's let's just give me an example. quite a bit of a change but it still felt within the boundaries of that song but I I did some interesting contrast so <clears throat> again create depending on your creative moment that day I just decided you know I feel like mixing it up a little rather than giving the predictable pair of repeated you know one motif then I repeat it I'm going to change up the bottom one. I'm going to change up the second one a little bit to give them a little, ooh, what's that? Oh, what's that, right? So, yeah, little interest there. Keep, keep you know, keep the interest. Keep it going. Keep that thing going up. Keep it going up, 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 up. I never know which way I'm going. Up, up, up. Yeah. So that's one way. To, that's, that's the three ways to do it, right? Okay. So, um... So we have the two ver we have the two exact duplicate, uh, my dear son, blah blah blah, and then, um, but they're calling for rain. They're the same in Jackson in Johnsonville, right? And then, um, and now we have what we call a pre-chorus, and a pre-chorus is when we change the music, uh, and not only do we change the music and possibly even change the rhyme scheme, but we also want to write music that creates tension, which usually doesn't mean that we're ever going to use the one. So in the case that I'm playing, I'm playing in the key of E. Disregard the capo because I'm tuned down to D. So that capo makes my guitar a normal tuning. So I was playing in E, and um, yeah, so uh, I'm thinking about um, changing. Oh, I don't want to go to E. That's right. So in the in the pre-chorus, the one chord, the E chord, is very um, resolved. And what I don't want, for the most part, is resolve. So let's listen to this. Let's listen to this pre-chorus and see what happens. I think we might be surprised. Uh, let's just see what it does. Let me just go here. And let me go around here. And we'll go down here. And let's see if we can find that pre-chorus. You're stubborn old daddy ain't said too much. But I'm sure you know he sends his love. Everything's the same old same Johnsonville 
Here comes the pre-chorus. You stubborn old daddy ain't said too much. So but I'm sure you know he sends his love. And she goes on. There's the five. And a letter from home. Very interesting. He did go to the one. He went to the one, and he also, not only did he go to the one, but he gave the title. Letters from Home, and a letter from home, which is the name of the song. And it resolves. It's almost like, well, it's not almost, it's like it's done, it's finished. We could move on to another verse. And what we would have in that case is we would have a non-chorus song. In letters from home. Let's see what key that's in. Home. Okay, it's in the key of... Um, the key of C. In the letters from home. Now he could do a... He could just go... He could go another one. da 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 he could do that. He could just go right, keep it mellow, right? But instead, what does he do? So he it makes it. He gives a resolution. So it's very relaxed and very resolved at the end of this verse. But then what happens? Let's see. Are we going to go to another verse? We could, because we completed that thought. Landing on the one, landing on the one note, too. Letters from home, which is one, which is C, home, C. Okay, good. Another verse, maybe. Let's see. I hold it up and show my buddies like we ain't scared of my boots. Ain't muddy and they all laugh like there's something funny about the way I talk. Whoa! So, da 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 da. Went to the four, didn't he? Went to the F. Da 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 da. So that is definitely that's a chorus. So the interesting thing about this is that. It's, it's a non-chorus format in that it goes back to the one and resolves completely at the end of the pre-chorus. But then it gets into that chorus. So what's the emotional effect here? The emotional effect is really resolved, very relaxed. It's very casual and da 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 You know, it's moving ever so beautifully and slowly and easy to take. It's, it's very, very relaxing. And, of course, he's talking about, you know, a very dangerous situation. So what an interesting lesson we're having here. Uh, this song about war, about men getting killed, and women and children, too, for that matter. But uh, men getting killed, combat, putting your life on the, on the line, you know, for something you believe in, um, is the most serious and dedicated uh, exercise. Uh, one is probably the most dedicated and extreme exercise you can do in your lifetime. And this song is so light and gentle. So if you wanted to do that kind of thing with your song, you could resolve at the end of a, a pre-chorus, and you notice that the pre-chorus, the music was different than the verse. Um, and so, do you want to hear that again? Do we need to hear that again so that we, we, we can tell the difference between the, the verse and the pre-chorus? We didn't do that. So let's do that just so you can hear all the musical parts now. We've got three musical parts, verse, pre-chorus, which resolves. And then this gentle chorus, which does have the same kind of rhythm. Da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da. Now, uh... My dearest son, it's almost June. Da 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 da. da. Mm -hmm. Thumb it up and show my buddies. 
Oh, but there's an interesting thing that happened right there. Buddies. Here's up with you. And find you oh. well. I pushed the play button. Buddies in the beginning of the chorus is a feminine ending. Have we talked about that? In previous episodes we have. Oh, song ideas to deconstruct. Uh, for what it's worth. Oh, what a great song. Oh, I love that song. I love that song. Um, and you know what? We could go to that. We could jump. Let me finish this one. And we could jump to that song only because, man, I love that song. And also because you requested it. So uh, let me finish this one because we're on a roll. We're on a biscuit. Um, so let's finish this one and then we'll go. We'll go to For What It's Worth. I just heard that song the other day because what was yesterday? Memorial Day. Celebrating veterans that died in combat, right? I'm pretty sure it's just that it, it, it might be celebrating all soldiers, which I think is the case, but they concentrate on the on the ones that gave the ultimate sacrifice. They gave their lives. So we do, and I'm really actually quite glad that we we're doing that because uh, it needs to be recognized every year. Every month, every day. Um, okay, so, and so I just heard that song yesterday, as in a series of songs about about uh, about veterans and about war and about and what are what is part of the war situation is protest, right? That is part of the encompassing thing about war is some people don't want to do it and some people don't like that other people are doing it, so. We will get to that. But let's finish this one up. Let's listen to the end of this verse. It's been dry, but they're calling for rain. And everything's the same old same. Johnsonville. Ooh. Your stubborn old daddy ain't said too much. But I'm sure you know he sends his love. And she goes on. In a letter from home. Did you notice the difference there? Did you did you check the difference out? It's quite a di quite a bit of difference in that um, uh, when he starts that uh, that bridge. And I was wrong, people. I am so sorry. It turns out that they did rhyme. Finds you well, Johnsonville. That's a really cool soft rhyme. It's been dry, but they're calling for rain. It's, I get these uh, lyrics off the internet, and the internet people, when they print these, don't know how to write them correctly. So it's been dry, but they're calling for rain. Should be one line, right? And that's what threw me off. Um, so it did rhyme. It's A-A-B-C-C-B. -C -C -B. So well and vil is a really wonderful, what I call, a, vo a soft vowel rhyme. So it's well and vil, eh and i, right? That's a vowel. And it works best with soft vowels like a, eh, a, eh, a, ah, and a. Uh. And u and o. U and o sound very f uh, familiar. And also a, uh, well, yeah, let's not get too far off on that. But this is a soft rhyme with a. Eh, and I, well and vil. And it worked quite well. Huh? Yeah. Um, what I love about soft rhymes, just to throw this out here, is they're unpredictable. So when you say well, you're thinking the rhyme is going to be tell or smell or gel, right? But instead, they went Johnsonville. And you get the subtle sound you get the subtle the subtle pop of rhyme but because it's subtle and because it's unpredictable it's a surprise which is contrast right anytime a little surprise pops into a song that's considered under the 
under the umbrella of contrast because we're going along predictably and suddenly there's a change and the change is the surprise. So we get a surprise. Ah, creating interest, right? Yes. Yes. So I really love soft rhymes because they're unpredictable and they create interest, right? So that's the reason why I love them. So you could also hear the difference in the verse and the lift. And then we get into the... Buddy, muddy, feminine, right? Now, feminine endings means, what that means is, the last syllable of the line is not stressed. The last syllable is unstressed. Buddy. Did you get that? Buddy. Unstressed syllables dangling at the end. When we wanted to hear it, we like to hear it stressed. When we hear it unstressed, two, one of two things happens. We either, we either feel tension, or in some cases, we hear comedy. Unstressed syllables can be funny. They can also be very tense. So isn't it interesting that Buddy and Muddy have kind of it's kind of light, isn't it? It's, it's not funny, but it's kind of plea. It's kind of light, kind of throwaway. It doesn't have that, you know, like, I hold it up and I show my friends. You hear the difference? I hold it up and I show my buddy. That little throwaway, that ping. That, uh, that we ain't scared and our boots ain't muddy. Nice. Isn't that nice? And now, and they all laugh. There's the resolve. Because feminine endings are desperately wanting to resolve to masculine. Right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly, Mr. Two. It is interesting, isn't it? So you can manipulate. What I'm trying to say is, and we do this all through these lessons, is... Um, you can manipulate your listener's emotions simply by your choice of rhyme scheme, your line length, and your feminine or masculine endings, right? These are all little tools that you have to emphasize the emotion of your song. And in this case, it's so obvious to me and to you that they're trying to keep this really light this really heavy topic, really light. With that, and, and you know, the, the whole feel of the song is light. I mean, there's nothing, you know, there's nothing heavy about this, you know. I mean, that's very, it's very, very light. and. And I love the way that it resolved at the end of the of the pre-chorus. We didn't know it was a pre-chorus because it da 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 it ended right da 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 buddy buddy da 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 Very nice, very nice how that we're keeping it light a little bit a throwaway. Um and let's see how it ends here. Be all that, like there's something funny about the way I talk. When I funny rhymes with muddy and buddy. Something funny about the way I talk. Mama sends her best y'all. Mama sends her best y'all. I fold it up and put it in my shirt. Pick up my gun and get back to work. And it keeps me driving. Driving on, waiting on. Home. Now there's some really, really good, some really wonderful um, subtleties in this in this course that maybe we should talk about, because when you're writing, they they 
occasionally what I call do little clusters instead of doing it um, um, and they all laugh like there's something funny about the way I talk about the da 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 it's not about the way I talk it's a little cluster about the way I talk ba da da those are like um, eighth notes da 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 they're either eighth or sixteenth notes but they're really quick instead of about the way I talk that's what you were predictably hearing but instead, they compressed the ending there about the way I talk. Wonderful little technique for y'all to use. You know, when you're looking at your lines of your song, and you f and you think, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of bing bang 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 bang. It's kind of moving along, almost too predictable. Try compressing some of your endings about the way I talk. Mama sends her best, y'all. Fold it up, but put it in my shirt. Notice that he didn't do the feminine ending there. Pick it up, pick up my gun and go back to work. Put it in my shirt. Back to work. See the da-da-da, the little triplets? Back to work. And it keeps me driving on. Waiting on letters from home and then the last one is stretched out like you would predict da 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 bum and notice instead of going letters from home it's letters from home it's right on the downbeat letters from downbeat so lots of little compressions so it's before the downbeat ba da 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 letters from home see how they did that so Compressing before the downbeat, compressing before the downbeat, and then finally we get the last one goes boom right down on the last one, right? So all these little tricks are rhythmic and rhyming uh, tricks that you can use in your song. And you can rewrite your song, songs that you've already written, and uh, you can look at them and go, oh, I could compress these lines and that line. And that would give a little interest because it's a little, it would be a, maybe a little bit um, unpredictable. So you could do the first one like predictably, da, da, da. And then the second time go, ba, da, da. Right? Just give them a little, you know, push the beat a little bit. Compress it in rather than going out to where they expect. Just crunch it in a little bit and create a little compound a little uh, compound, uh, uh, little fragment there, right? I forgot what I called it now. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting old, folks. Uh, okay, so, um, so the chorus, he's now, he takes it back from the letter, he takes it to his friends, you know, which you can do also. He's talking about his friends. And notice how he's trying to keep it light. Like, you know, there's no mud on our boots. We're, you know, like we're not scared. I hold it up and show my buddies. Like, you know, it's everything so light and, and uh, trying to keep it funny. Uh, I thought that was really... Uh, okay. Oh, hey. Hi there, hype bot. Good to have you aboard. We're talking about Letters from Home. Uh, a song that's uh, J uh, John Michael Montgomery, and uh, we're breaking it down and trying to figure out how, why was this song such a big hit? Uh, why is it such a good song? And, and uh, we're just talking about the chorus right now. Um, I fold it up, put it in my shirt, pick up my gun, get back to work. I love that line. It's like, pick up my shovel, you know? Pick up my pen or pick up my guitar. It's pick up my deadly weapon and get back to work. You know, uh, it's such a brilliant, massive understatement, right? Understatement and overstatements are attention getters. Like, you know, like you could say, you know, you know I would die for your love. I would lie for your love. I would cry for your love. You know, those are overstatements. That gets people attention. Also, massive understatements. Pick up my gun and go back to work. Oh, that's a brilliant understatement. Love that. So he's keeping it light, you know. Um, 
and it keeps me driving on letters from home, right? Hey, yeah, thanks for the uh, thanks for the bot. R.I.P. Yeah, indeed. Yes, yes. Um, so now, where is this going to go? Uh, let's see. My dearest love, it's almost done. Uh, I've been lying here all night long, wondering where you might be. I saw your mama. Ooh, what have we got here? Have we got a letter from the girlfriend? Really? So we've got two letters. Not one, but two letters. Second verse, another letter. Brilliant move. Brilliant move. It's going to keep my attention. Rather than going on about stuff about home, let's get into romance. Now, there's only three basic topics in all of songwriting. There's life, there's love, and there is spiritual, right? Or, um, yeah, spiritual. And it can be everything from Orthodox Christian to voodoo, right? Anything that's not of this world, right, that we believe in, any belief system. Um, what's interesting to me is I've noted that love is more important and has more strength and power than life topics. So notice, rather than put the girlfriend's letter first in the first verse, puts the girlfriend's letter second. Because we're, remember that? We want to keep it going up. We don't want it to flatline. And if he had talked on the second verse about more ideas from home, it wouldn't have necessarily flatlined. But boy, you better keep it interesting. You better have topics about home that are really, good word here, compelling, right? Compelling home topics. But rather than do that, why not, why just go to the love letter? Again, a brilliant idea. Well, well played, well played. My dearest love, it's almost done. I've been lying here all night long wondering where you been where you might be. I saw your mama, and that was the mama that wrote the first letter, right? So how that's nicely tied in. I saw your mama and I showed her the ring. Man on the telephone said something so I couldn't sleep. Right? Again, subtle, very subtle. But obviously the guy on the TV said, you know, like 1,500 men died yesterday in Wang Chang or, or uh, Mukluk or wherever, you know, Baghdad, you know. Um, so, uh, let's see. Uh, I couldn't, so, so let's, the, the, the pre-chorus. So I couldn't sleep. But I'll be all right. I'm just missing you. And this is me kissing you. Isn't that nice? Missing you, kissing you. That's a particular type of rhyme that I call inside end rhyme. And what that means is what rhymes is a word inside the end. It's not the end word. It's a word inside the line. But it's so powerful that it is that it's as effective as if it were at the end. Uh, the, the poster child for this kind of rhyme is, uh, I call it interior end rhyme, is um, Hello Walls, I want to talk with you a while. Hello Floor, I want to walk with you a while. Notice talk and walk are the rhyme. It's way inside the line. With you a while, with you a while. Talk with you a while. Walk on you a while. So everything after the rhyme, everything after the rhyme was um, copied. With you a while, on you a while. A little change, but still, you get the idea. There's no rhyme there. The rhyme is talk and walk. Interior and rhyme. A great, great trick. Another great trick. If you're having trouble, like, Rhyming you, like, um, uh, I've been all right missing you, 
all the things I'm going through. He could have done that. They could have done that. But instead, they went kissing, missing, and kissing. Again, very effective, very cool, because, of course, kissing is a, it's a powerful word, right? It's a great word. So that's the way they got a really powerful romantic word in the song, you know, is they went an interior end rhyme. They rhymed missing and kissing rather than you. Another little trick for you. Um, and then uh, X's and O's in a letter from home. Again, interior rhyme. X's, well, they're little short lines. X's and O's in a letter from home. Now, notice how short those are. X's and O's, two, two stresses. X's and O's, another two. Letters from home. What have we said about the length of time between rhyme? The shorter the length of time between the rhyme, the more tension you're creating. So even though it's resolving, and did they do the same thing? Yes. Same thing in the first verse. Um, sure you know, uh, she sends, she sends his love, and she goes on and on in a letter from home. Right. So sends his love, she goes on and on, letter from home. So we've compressed it. We're creating tension because the rhyme came so quickly. And then we resol but we resolved it. So it's a beautiful little dance, little combination of tension and release, tension and release, right? I just really love that. Um, and then he shows his buddies. And then what happens on the bridge? We have a bridge. And the bridge is probably going to have different um, music, right? Let's just see. Dear son, I know I ain't written. Sitting here tonight alone in the kitchen, it occurs to me. It is slightly different, isn't it? Da 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 da. Now we haven't heard those notes. We've heard the chords before. Da 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 da. But he lowered it way down. Da 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 da. Now lowering creates a sense of sadness. It can be anger. It can be frustration. But it's basically a very light sort of negative vibration. Whereas notes going up have a slight happy or excite, excited feeling. And just to take it to the nth degree, it can also be a warning. So there is a negative aspect to going up. You can go, warning, warning. This girl is, the, you know, she's the devil in it with a blue, with a blue dress, with a blue dress on. So you can you can go up and warn someone, but going down, that's so effective right there. Dropping down, you know, dear son, I know I haven't written. Sitting here tonight alone in the kitchen, it occurs to me. I might not have said it, so I'll say it now. Son, you make me proud. And then what happens? I might not have said it, so I'll say it now. Son, you make me proud. Ah, what just happened? You make me proud. Pause. Pause. Again, very, very effective. Stopping and starting occasionally. We always like to have our song have momentum, right? We want it to have momentum, but along with momentum, what contrasts momentum? No momentum. <laughs> so, occasionally, it's nice to either pause or come to a, an abrupt stop. In this case, it was a pause because the whole song is real gentle, right? Very gentle. So a pause is more effective than a stop. A stop is so, you know, putting on the brakes. It's too radical. But that nice pause makes you think and you absorb. I'm, you know, um, you make me proud. And, of course, at this point, all the men are crying, right? Yeah, yeah. All the men are crying. The women have been crying for a while. Now the men are crying. That pause, that pregnant pause, really got you right here, right? So, 
and then we go on and the song ends but wasn't there a lot of great lessons in that i mean i thought there was a, just an incredible amount of lessons in there now we had a request so we're all going to have to go right now see what time is it yeah we'll have time we'll break this down for a minute i got a little more time we're going to go to um what's the song we're going to go to we're going to go to where is it uh now following we're going to go to um for what it's worth buffalo springfield for what it's worth so everybody go online download the lyric for what it's worth and then uh and then go to Spotify. Well, you don't go. You don't have to go to Spotify because I'm going to play it. I'm going to go to Spotify. So here I go. I'm going online. I'm going to open up this thing a little bigger. I'm going to be careful to open up a new, a new one. All right. I'm not going to lose my precious chat. I wish I could lock that chat down, man. I wish there was a way for me to not be able to erase it. But anyway, here we go. For what it's worth. F O R T W H for what it's worth lyrics. There we go. Now we're going to copy this. First, we're going to open it up down here. There's a little. It's very hard to see. I don't know why they made it so 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 uh, light. But if you look at the bottom, there's an arrow pointing down. Click on that arrow, and it'll open up the whole lyric. And that's what we want to copy. I'm going to, you can just leave it open like that. But for me, I am going to copy it so that I can print it so I can watch you at the same time. We're going to go here and open up a new document. I'm going to put that down like that. And now uh, we're going to make a few little changes here. Um, Again, these things aren't always printed the way we like them, but what the heck, we're going to try to... I'm just making spaces between the sections so I can... Uh... And wouldn't you know it, of course, Stephen Stills wrote this. Yeah, Stephen Stills, man. He knows what he's doing, the dude. Let's, let's first of all make all this um, normal. And then we'll take this one and we'll make it that. And then we'll make, put that in there. And then we'll do that. Okay. Here we go. Something's happening here. What a great song. Um, great idea. Really appreciate that idea. So we're almost there. Okay. Um, I'm going to indent. I can already see um, yep yeah, I can already see how interesting this song is for what it's worth we're going to put that in F um, come on F and we're going to for what it is worth W O R T H See, I'm, I'm filing it in my lyric thing. And now we're going to print it. All right. And now while it's printing, I'm going to go to, I'm going to go to uh, F-O-R-W-H-A-T for what it's worth. There it is, Buffalo Springfield. And I'm going to pop this into my Creative Vets. Soldier song. There we go. Good. All right. Now, we can listen for that. We can listen to that. Good. Oh, it didn't print. Wait. Hold on. Oh, print. Yeah. Please. Here we go. Here it comes. There it is. All right, good. Now we got this. All right. Let's listen to this. Uh, I'm assuming you've all got the lyrics up. 
Uh, let's let's uh, let's go back. Let me get my stuff open here so I can see the chat and see all the things. Let's go back to chat room right here. Careful not to erase. I'd like to be able to just keep that from being erased. But uh, there's no way to lock it. I wish I could lock that page down, but impossible to do. Okay, and get the get this up here. Okay, here we go. Uh, for what it's worth. song wonderful song okay there's a lot going on in this song um, one thing you know when I really look at, at when I really look at this song it's very interesting in that I find it much more subtle than I remembered it you know when I think of the song in my mind I think it exploding, right? Getting so big at the end, like giant, huge song. But there's such a brilliant amount of restraint in this song. And it's smoldering, isn't it? It is just smoldering, right? Let me look and see if, you've, uh, if you guys are saying anything. I want to make sure I'm not missing something. Uh, that you might have been saying. Very interesting. Got that. Join. Got that. Got that. Discord. Donate. Learn more. Learn more. Donate. Okay, good. Just want to make sure somebody hadn't said something. But, uh, and please make comments. And uh, pardon me if I don't read them. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, when I get focused, I'm, I'm so focused, I sometimes forget to read them. Um, uh, okay, so, this is a study and a brilliant study in restraint and in, um, what's the word I'm looking for, in simplicity, 
right? And in that restraint, there is mountains of tension because of the topic, because of what it's saying. Also, let's look at the textures. We've got that, we've got the vibrato guitar going da 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 da, da, da. Vibrato guitar, which creates an eerie sort of, um, I would call this, I would actually rank this as a groove song. Um, there's two basically kind, two basic kinds of song, your regular song and your groove song. The difference between them is a regular song usually has three noticeable motives. Three. But in a groove song, because it's hypnotic, in a groove, you don't need three. You only need two. Just the, the groove itself and then something to relieve it just for a minute and then the groove again. And when we're talking about groove songs, there's two kinds of groove songs. There's up-tempo and what I call dirge. You know, another another dirge song is... Um, Mama, take this badge off of me. I can't use it. Long black clouds hanging down Feels like I'm knocking on heaven's door Knocking, knocking, knocking on heaven's door Isn't that interesting? He didn't go Knocking, knocking, knocking on heaven's door Dylan said, no, 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 no. Uh, I know how to write a song. I think I've proven that. But I'm not going to go to the uh, the main, big, huge power chorus. I'm going to keep it in the groove, in the pocket, in the hypnotizing of the depression, right? And this song is one of those. It has a little bit of relief when it goes, I think it's time we stop. Children, what's that sound? Everybody look at what's going down. Right? Um, and it's nice that I think it's time we stop. Let's see how much they stop. Let's see how much they stop. But that stop is very effective there. Again, sudden contrast. Stop. Oh, where are we going? That's not the song. I don't know how we got to that. That must be the follow-up song for people that love songs about the 60s. There's something happening here They're Telling me i got to beware I think it's time we stop Children, what's that sound? Everybody look what's going on So the music didn't stop but it's the harmony comes in right away. I think it's time we stop. And then the harmony, I believe the harmony stopped. So you get you get that one little spot of harmony. What's that sound? Oh, no. what's going All right, everybody, everybody harmonize. So we get that contrast. I think it's time we and the word stop is the first time we hear the harmony. So again, real effective. Very nice. And then again, that those um, harmonics, the harmonics, uh, you know. Right? The harmonics are giving us a lot of good stuff there. Giving that light little 
which is that kind of like eerie little floaty thing above this real simmering, smoldering, you know, that reverb, uh, that vibrato guitar, really, really effective. And uh, there's something happening here. What it is ain't exactly clear. Notice it was like, let's read that lyric without his interpretation. There's something happening here, but it is ain't exactly clear. So that's the natural line rhythm. But he accentuates what it is ain't exactly clear. I love the little stop, little pauses. There's a man with a gun over there telling me I've got to be. I love the stops. It's not telling me I've got to beware. Telling me I've got to beware. Hear the difference? Subtle, but nice. Telling me I've got to beware. Look at your songs. Look at your lines and see, are there any ways, like, the way to find those little pauses is where, at the end of a phrase, telling me, that's a phrase, I've got to beware, that's a phrase. So telling me, I've got to beware. There's a man with a gun over there. I'm not sure if he did that, but he could have. What it is, ain't exactly clear. You wouldn't want to pause. What it is ain't exactly clear. See what I mean? There's a little there's a little subtle comma. What it is, comma, ain't exactly clear. Uh, there's something happening here. There's something happening here. But that's nice. Ba 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 ba. So we set up with a set of of straight quarter notes. There's something happening here. Da, 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 da. Notice the melody is the same. What it is ain't exactly clear. There's a man with a gun over there. Almost like the first one. Telling me I've got to beware. Four lines of the same melody, but yet those subtle differences. Uh, let's see what they're doing musically, chord-wise. Are they, is it, they stay the same? Mm -hmm. It is the same, isn't it? So we have a mantra that, again, is signaling this is a groove song. This is a dirge. We are going to hypnotize you in the sadness and seriousness of the song. We're not going to, you know, he could have gone, something's happening. What it is exactly clear. There's a man with a gun over there. Tell me I got to beware. I think it's up. You know, no. And again, this young man, Stephen Stills, he was just a young songwriter, but he had great intuition for a beginner, didn't he? He said, no, we're going to keep it the same and we're going to just build that tension and build that tension. And then. Battle lines being drawn. I love that. If you read it straight, there's battle lines being drawn. There's battle line being drawn. The da da la da da la. That rhythm is really incredible. It really gets your attention. Nobody's right if everybody's wrong. Again, attention to the minute details of the line rhythm are really, really so incredibly important in a song that's a dirge like this, right? Extremely little subtleties like this, little stops and starts, are very, very important. Little bits of contrast 
but not to break the hypnotic spell of the song. So little goes a long way in a song that's a dirge, that's a groove song, especially these slow songs like this. I mean, if it's a, you know, if it's a James Brown song, oh, I mean, my God, you know, it's going to be much, you know, popcorn. It's going to be a lot more frenetic and crazy, right? You can break it up and be a little bit different on a, on a, on a super up-tempo groove song. But on these dirges, subtlety and, and seemingly repetition, endless repetition, but really it's not. If we notice and we break it down, we see subtle changes really make it interesting, right? And um, so, you know, I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but you can see where, where, where we're going, where we're, where, what we're getting at. Is look at the subtle changes in this. When I when I get off the air, which I have to do here pretty quick, um, listen to this song, and listen to all those little subtleties. Let's look quickly at what the at what the what the rhyme scheme is. Something's happening here. What it is ain't exactly clear. <clears throat> okay, so these are all these are all symmetrical lines. There's something happening here. But it is ain't exactly clear. There are sets of three stresses. There's a man with the gun over there telling me I've got to beware, right? So what do we have? What rhyme scheme? We have three sets of three rather than the traditional sets of four. There's something happening over here is a traditional setup. A set of four stresses per line is is a traditional sort of standard, but instead something's happening here. They shortened the lines by shortening these lines. Remember what we said: the quicker the rhyme comes, the more tension. The song's all about tension. Shortening the lines really increases tension. Touchdown! Brilliant, right? Something's happening here, but it isn't exactly clear. Now we expect him to change the rhyme scheme, and he does. There's a man with a gun over there telling me I've got to beware. Very good. So that's predictable. I think it's time we stop. Children, what's that sound? Everybody look what's going down. Stop, children, what's that sound? Stop, children, what's that sound? Everybody look what's going down. Yep, so that's four. Four lines, four stresses rather, All right? And a very isn't that brilliant that that um, if you want to call it a chorus, it's a two-line chorus, right? It's almost what we would might call a, a refrain chorus. Uh, and some people might say that's not a chorus; it's just the end of the verse. But I like to call it. I think it's different enough that we can call it a chorus. Uh, but I don't think they're playing. Let's see if they're playing different music there. What's that sound You're up there? A telling me I got to beware. I think it's time we stop, children. What's that sound? Everybody look what's going down. Yes, it is different. Uh, it it's, it's basically sounds like... Um, Better you stop, children, what's that sound? Everybody look what's going down. Except there, the voicings are such that you don't really hear that driving. You hear more like... You know, it's much more subtle. Uh, so, uh, again, keeping in the theme of the hypnotic dirgeness so we do have a different we do have a slightly different um chord pattern for this little short
chorus, right? So, um, so that's that's the breakdown of the music and the chords. Um, notice he didn't go up. I think it's time we stop, children. What's that sound? He didn't go. I think it's time we stop, children. What's that sound? Everybody, look what's going down. Could have done that. Why didn't he do that? Because, well, he might have been smoking a lot of weed. That's one reason. <laughs> You're burnt. You know? Uh, but the other reason is it keeps the dirge going, right? Keeps it going. Keeps that hypnotic trance. Don't want to break the trance, right? Even though we changed the chords and we just had two little lines that have four stresses instead of three, it's different, but still not that different. Still has that subtle, that kind of, we're still in the pocket, right? So let's look at the lyric real quick, because I do have to go. Uh, there's something happening here. What, it's, what is isn't clear. There's a man with a gun over there telling me I got to beware. It's time we stop. What's that sound? Everybody look what's going down. So we have something going on. There's a man with a gun. Battle lines being drawn, so we're continuing this thought of there's there's this tension on on you know in general. Uh, there's a guy with a gun pointing at me, so we're obviously we're talking about there's boundaries. Someone's uh, saying don't get near me because I've got a gun. Uh, and he says battle lines being drawn, so now we're into obviously we're into war and battles. Nobody's right if everybody's wrong. Oh, how interesting is that? That's your Big conclusive statement, right? Big conclusive statement. Nobody's right if everybody's wrong. And uh, notice they're saying everybody this and that. So it's it's those people over there. Nobody's right if everybody's wrong. So it's it's a very inclusive. It's not pointing at you directly. It's not saying you're you know if you're if you all are are all think you're right. Well, you're all wrong. You notice how that pointing it, the finger at somebody, doesn't work. But you say, nobody's right if everybody's wrong. Inclusive, right? Very important that we're inclusive. And that includes me, so I'm being preached to myself. So that softens the preachy bit, right? Young people speak in their minds. Getting so much resistance from behind. Oh. Oh, thank you. Yes. Well, 5,000. Oh, woo. That's, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. Super appreciate it. All right. B wonderful, wonderful. So you can see how this is building. Um, then, uh, uh, what a field day f for the heat. A thousand people in the street. Oh, now we're talking about... What we talked about before, we set it up with the young people. Um, first we set up battle lines, then we set up nobody's right if everybody's wrong. And so we're thinking about that. Wow, I wonder what he means by that. That's interesting. And then here's young people. And now there's a field day for the heat. A thousand people in the street singing songs and they're carrying signs. Mostly say, hooray for our side. I love that. You see, this is what we need more of today. What the world needs now is cooperation and sympathy and understanding. You know, with these, uh, this song is so pertinent and so, um, so important for today's world, isn't it? Where we're trenched, we're deeply entrenched in what we believe and everything else is fake news, right? On both sides, battle lines being drawn. Isn't it wonderful to say people everywhere really care? Like, I'm, I'm a liberal, meaning that I listen to both sides and I understand both sides. That's, what, that's my definition of liberal. I like to hear both sides. I treat all people as honorable. All people are honorable. And all people care about America and most care about the world as well because we're not living in a cocoon anymore. We're living in a very tiny blue and green ball. 
that's flying through space that's something like 12,000 miles a minute or something. I mean, we're moving. Woo! We're moving so fast. Uh, we've got to preserve this little place. So Democrat, Republican, Libertarian, um, we're all in this together. We're in this together. We all care about our children. We all want to laugh. We all cry when things don't go well. And so we need more understanding. And this is a great song, <clears throat> a wonderful way of bringing this to our attention. Notice that it gets preacher and preacher as the song progresses, right? And then we give, I love that we give, mostly say hooray for our side. This is the third verse. And notice, did you notice that there's no bridge? That it's just verse, little chorus, verse, refrain, chorus, verse, refrain, chorus. But also, notice that in the third verse, there's ooze that show up. Harmony ooze in the background, which now makes that verse musically separate. Again, contrast creates interest. And in the fourth verse, everybody's harmonizing together. That's not an accident. That is actually on purpose. They figured that out. Let's make this one even more interesting and different by everybody in the band harmonizing, right? Um, okay, got to go, all right? Got to go. It's time to go. We have somebody else coming in, all right? So um, there we are. That's our thing for today. Uh, on Friday, I'm, I'm, the topic is going to be less is more. We're going to talk about that. Or if you want, we can continue talking about soldier songs and war songs. And again, taking your requests. All right? Keep it on the double nickel. I'll see you on the flip-flop. Adios, amigos.